Well, good afternoon. Uh, welcome. Glad that you could join me again today. I was thinking about, uh, and for the last several weeks, we've been talking about the, the Lord's Prayer, and I think it's a beautiful thing to think about. It reminds me of, uh, the part I want to look at today reminds me of the time recently when I got to go to Chicago and I got to go up into the Willis Towers. Uh, when I was growing up, it was called the Sears Tower. It's later been changed to the Willis Tower. It's a very tall, tall building and there's an observation deck quite uh, high up in the air. And from there, you can see in every direction, north, east, south, and west, all around Chicago. And you can see for quite a while, quite a far distance away, you can even put a quarter in one of their binoculars and, and see even farther than what your naked eye will allow. And, and for me, that's just a beautiful sight to be able to see far, far away. If I were in an airplane, I would be able to see far, far away from where I am because I'm at a higher advantage point than when I am on the earth. The higher you are above an activity, the greater you have, the greater view that you have. I was reminded of how NASCAR, uh, we often cheer for one particular driver, but it isn't just one driver that is making the car go. It is a team that is working with him. And after the race, if they're interviewing the driver, they will. the driver will often give credit to his team. And we see his team of his pit crew, the guys changing the tires, putting gas in the car, and, and fixing various things, maybe with even duct tape, and, and, and they make the car go. But there's other people on the team that we don't see. There is the team that is re uh, recording how fast the car is going, about how much gas is it used, because there's not a gas gauge on the inside. Uh, how long does it take before we need to replace the tires on this as it's going so fast? important people that are imagine, managing the car while it's on the track. There's also those that are managing the car when it's off the track, getting it from track to track and back to its home base so that work can be done. And what are the needs? Do we need to go get more motors or what do we need to make this car keep going? But there's a, a group of the team that I think is sometimes overlooked. They are called the spotters. Spotters are up high in the air above the people that are watching the race and they're watching the race as well. They're they're watching their car to warn the driver what is ahead. Maybe there's a wreck and a turn that's coming up, or maybe the car is getting a little loose and the driver may not notice it, or maybe there's some danger coming up behind them. Somebody's trying to pass them, and it's the job of the spotter to point this out. Spotters are above everybody else in what they can see, and they are part of the team to see that the uh, driver gets to where they need to be. So a spotter is a very important part in the race team. As we look again today at this powerful, beautiful, and exciting words of Jesus that Jesus used to teach us to pray, I think we can see that from his vantage point, he has the best view. And it's in that view that he has our best interest at heart. I ask that you will join me today as I read this. Maybe you want to get your own Bible and turn to Matthew chapter 6. We're going to start at verse 9 of Matthew chapter 6. And remember, as I read this, we need to do this with some passion, with some excitement, because we are speaking to the living God who is interested in us. He desires to have an intimate relationship with us. We are stepping into his presence right here in Matthew chapter 6. And he says, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Our Father, where? In heaven. The Bible doesn't tell us exactly where heaven is. Hell is often referred to as a pit. We generally think down for hell and up for heaven. I think part of that is because when Jesus was crucified and he died and he was buried in the grave, it says that three days later he arose from the grave, arose going up. And then in 40 days later in Acts, we read about how he ascended into heaven. He went up. So we have this general idea that, that hell is down and heaven is up. 
if heaven is up and hell is below, it would give Jesus the better vantage point to see us. And, and, when, and when he ascended, he had the perfect view. But not only when he ascended did he get a better view, he gave us something special. He gave us the Holy Spirit. He gave us our spotter. And if we will open our heart, our mind, and our ears to our spotter, to our Savior, to the Holy Spirit, he can warn us of the danger that is ahead of us. Jesus said these words in John chapter 14, verse 26. But the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. So when we're tempted, our spotter reminds us of what we've heard in the love letter that God has sent us. When we are fearful, the Holy Spirit comes alongside and brings us comfort. When we lose a loved one, the Holy Spirit sends the God of all comfort into our life to comfort us so that we can take the comfort we receive from God and pass it on to others. We can't see the Father in heaven, and we can't see the Holy Spirit, but we know He is watching us and He is with us. He keeps His promise. I can't see the cell phone waves as I use my cell phone. I can't see it going from my phone to the tower and the tower to another phone. But how else can we explain that those things work? It's in faith that we believe that they work. I can't see the wind, but if I were operating a sailboat, that's if I knew how to operate a sailboat, I would need the wind to get me to where I desire to go. I know I need the wind to make me move. And that's a matter of faith. Hebrews 11, 1 says, Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. We are called in God's word to walk by faith and not by sight. Hebrews also says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. The model prayer isn't about us asking God to give us what we need. He knows what we need before we even ask him. The prayer is more about being intimate with the Savior so that we can be more open to the safe direction that he desires to take us. He wants to direct us to our destiny, and too often we mistake our destiny for a destination. He is never finished with us. He is still shaping and molding us. I think God is not at a vantage point but in an advantage point. He sees the danger that his sheep face and he desires to protect them. It is up to the sheep to stay close to the shepherd so that they can experience that protection. It isn't just about seeing him in an advantage point or a vantage point, but to see him for our vantage to see the great need we have for him in our life. The psalmist said in Psalms 28, verse 7, I'm going to read this from the Living Bible. It says, The Lord is my strength and shield. I trust him with all my heart. He helps me and my heart is filled with joy. I burst out in songs of thanksgiving, just like these birds around me today are singing with thanksgiving. From his place, he is never too far to be my strength, my shield, my sustainer. Psalm 61 verse 3 says, For you are my safe refuge, a fortress where my enemies cannot reach me. Because of his position, I can rest in him. I want to dwell in his presence because we have more, um, because, because we become the average of the people that we spend the most time with. If I want to be like Jesus, I need to spend a healthy time, a healthy amount of time with him. I need to meditate on this love letter that he wrote to me and he wrote about me in this word. Because of his vantage point, I need him first and foremost. No one else can stand in his place as he watches over me. And if I allow anyone else to try to direct me, uh, they don't have an interest in me reaching my finish line. They don't have an interest in me re reaching my dis destiny. He is more concerned about me, more concerned about me than he is sparrows. And he knows when a sparrow falls. And he knows how many hairs are on my head. He has my destiny in mind. If I don't have him over me and myself in submission to him, my destiny will be lost. And that's why we must, not ought or might, but we must fix our eyes on Jesus. I believe that the question that we need to ask ourselves today is this. Who is looking ahead for you? You can't move safely forward as long as you're looking in your rearview mirror. Our Father in heaven is looking ahead for us, and he is right along with us as we are as long with him. We can trust him no matter what. The wisest man in the world 
that ever lived on earth other than Jesus. His name was Solomon. He said these words, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. So who are you allowing to direct your path? Who are you allowing to be the spotter in your life? Doing it on your own or going with the flow is going to be frustrating and you're going to miss your destiny. The writer of Revelation reminds us of this. He says, look how far you have fallen. Turn back to me and do the works you did at first. It is never too late to turn back and begin to trust him as your savior, as your spotter, as your leader, as your shepherd. Are you allowing the frustrations of life to, uh, of life to attempt to be your spotter? Now, if you're not careful, they will take you off the path. They will take you away from your destiny. You've got to focus on your Heavenly Father. So what would it look like if we took this Lord's Prayer and we took the group pronoun out and made it into a personal pronoun and made it all about us? And that's what David did when he wrote the, the Psalms 23 when he says, The Lord is my shepherd. He didn't say the Lord is our shepherd. He said it is mine. So this is a personal prayer. It shows us how important it is for us to find the intimacy with God the Father. So if we change it to this and we're not corrupting scripture, we're personalizing scripture, it would say my Father in heaven, holy and set apart is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give me my daily bread and help me take care of those that are around me giving them the bread that they need awaken me to their need forgive me of my sins and help me forgive those who have sinned against me lead me away from temptation and protect me from the evil one um it may feel a little bit overwhelming when it comes to this topic of prayer and jesus wanting uh, what jesus is wanting us to see but what we have to understand is it is simple it's as simple as a child coming to an earthly father and saying, Daddy, I need this. Or as my daughters do, Daddy. Because when we come to the Father, He is our Abba Father. He is our Daddy. He loves for His children to come to Him. He wants us to respect Him and submit to His authority. And when we come to Him, we don't need to come to Him in fear of rejection. But knowing that Sometimes it is in love that we are disciplined. Come to the Father. He is in heaven. He is looking over you. And he has loved you with an everlasting love. My friends, I hope that you can join us on Sunday. We've opened the church doors back up. Uh, if you want to wear a mask, wear a mask. We just love to see your presence. And for those of you that continue to support the First Church, First Church of God in Cushing, thank you once again. And may God's blessing be upon you. We continue to pray for you. If you have a prayer request, please feel free to private message me. We would love to visit with you. May God bless you and keep you as you go through this week. Thank you.